Welcome to Engineering Update, brought to you by Mouser Electronics, the electronic components distributor with the widest selection of the newest products. I'm Melissa Barnes, Associate Editor of Electronic Component News. In this week's headlines, highlights from this year's Consumer Electronics Show, a pill-sized device for imaging the esophagus, researchers develop an integrated dual-mode infrared camera, Moog unveils their new analog synth, and a new robotic fish glides indefinitely. Michigan State University scientists and engineers have hatched their new and improved robotic fish named GRACE, which stands for Gliding Robot Ace. The fish was designed and built by electrical and computer engineering team who sought to improve the capabilities of current underwater robots. The new swimming robot uses little to no energy to glide almost indefinitely while gathering valuable underwater data. One major improvement of MSU's GRACE is that, aside from its swimming capability, it's about 10 times smaller and lighter than a commercial underwater glider. The improved technology of the RoboFish is made possible through the array of advanced water sensors which allow it to travel autonomously, while the integration of gliding and swimming locomotion modes makes Grace quite the versatile swimmer. The information she wirelessly sends back to scientists is used for a multitude of purposes, including data for the aid in clearing oil spills. I'm not sure when we could ever use something for oil spills, that hardly ever happens, but if you missed out on seeing this year's Consumer Electronics Show had to offer, we can show you some of those things right now from the most immense and popular CES to date. And we can sum it up using two emerging technologies, smart TVs and self-driving cars. If we can find a way to put these things together, I'll be the happiest man on earth. With a space encompassing almost 2 million square feet or 37 football fields, this year's CES was visited by over 140,000 attendees. So you can only imagine the competition of innovative presenters vying for the spotlight. This year, new TVs took center stage at the Vegas show. Boasting the highest definition in video displays, LG featured its touchscreen Ultra HD, and Sony launched the first Ultra HD OLED display. Samsung featured its bendable OLED, and Hisense launched its transparent 3D TV. It seems everyone was talking about the latest in smart TVs and super high definition displays. The emerging smart TVs included Qualcomm's Vuforia augmented reality, multi-device connectivity from Ultraviolet, and Samsung's smart TVs with voice and gesture recognition. Not to be outdone, Audi and Toyota bravely took on the new concept of the driverless car with their CES debut of new autonomous car models. Where previous models of driverless vehicles had clunky computers in the passenger seat, Audi boasted a sleek model with a motherboard no bigger than an iPad. Though the technology may be a long way off, Audi and Toyota showed their commitment to the project in the most state-of-the-art autonomous navigational tools to date. Until now, dual-mode active and passive infrared cameras, such as those used for military search and rescue operations, needed either two different infrared detectors or complex controllable filters to accommodate for different wavelengths. They often required additional signal processing to reconstruct a single image from the two modes. Now, researchers at Northwestern University's Center for Quantum Devices have found a way to integrate that active and passive infrared imaging capability onto one single chip. The researchers achieved this feat by engineering the quantum properties of novel semiconductor materials called indium arsenide gallium superlattices. By using the unique band structure of these type II super lattices, they developed a new structure incorporating two different super lattices with different layer spacings. The new technique enables the camera to easily switch from passive to active mode by a very small change in bias. When you combine this with the fact that Northwestern finally won a bowl game for the first time in 60 years, they're on a roll. A new device is being developed by Massachusetts General Hospital, which could provide better screening for esophageal cancer and other conditions. Engineers have developed an imaging system inside a tiny capsule no bigger than the size of a multivitamin pill. The device creates high-quality, three-dimensional, detailed microscopic images of the esophageal wall. The size alone is a big step up from the traditional endoscopic technologies, and the efficient design is more convenient for both the physician and the patient, as there is no need for sedation. The basic mechanics of the device lies within the inch-long endomicroscopy capsule, which contains a rotating infrared laser and sensors for recording reflected light. By manipulating the plastic ball attached to the flexible tether, the system operator can control the position of the endomicroscopy capsule in a patient's esophagus. The novel device has already proven to be successful in preliminary testing, as physicians reported that the new system was easy to operate and produced high-quality images in a fraction of the time. No word from the patients on how they felt having something crawl around in their throat. 
So you think the traditional analog synthesizer is a thing of the past? Well, Moog, the original makers of the very first synthesizer ever, is set to unveil their updated electronic music making marvel at this year's National Association of Music Merchants trade show. The instrument, made up of voltage controlled filters, has been named Sub Fatty. With its newly perfected electrical components, Sub Fatty is sure to thrill you techie music loving nerds out there. As if I wasn't already obsessed with 80s electronic synth music. Though today's common modern synths are usually digital, Moog's reinvention of their traditional analog system proves they are still reign as the electro music king. The new and improved components of the Sub Fatty's design involves advanced LCD strips, stable oscillators, noise generators, twin ADSR envelope generators, the famous Moog sounding VCF circuit, and an all-new multi-drive circuit, which apparently combines pre-filter gain with post-filter overdrive. Analog pioneer and Moog veteran Professor Herb Deutsch visited the Moog machine shop to test the sound technology of Sub Fatty. Just listen to these awesome electronic sounds as engineer turd musician Professor Deutsch rocks it out. However, Professor, you got nothing on my boy Poindexter. That wraps up this week's report. I'm Melissa Barnes, and this has been your Engineering Update. <laughs>